Tonight, suburbs sizzle and records tumble in Perth's unrelenting heatwave. Livestock in limbo. The ship makes it to port but is sent back out to sea. Another battery inferno sparks an urgent warning how to avoid the danger. The shocking restaurant health breach that's enough to make you sick. A history-making Powerball, the $200 million draw you'll only see here. And Mitch Marsh's emotional triumph and the WA batting coach who saved his career. Live from Perth, 7 News with Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening. The relentless heat making our city one of the hottest places on earth today has broken records in the suburbs. It started yesterday and lingered all night. It was still 28 at midnight. The temperature did drop near dawn, then soared to 42.6 degrees before lunchtime. But it was the Swan Valley really sweltering, hitting 45 degrees, an all-time high. Hot, but not bothered. Tradies in Ellenbrook making hay while the sun sears. You can't, it's just everything just dries up too quick, especially ourselves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a temperature limit? It's 42 now. Um, just when we feel well, we've had enough. The temperature went up and finally the tools went down. Perth's heatwave turned tsunami, flooding the Swan Valley. It's hottest day on record, 45.1 degrees. In Midland, people keeping their cool at shopping centres. I don't normally have lunch here, but I may have lunch. I've bought a book and I'll sit here for a little while. Icy poles, sports uniforms and recess and lunch indoors for school students at Swan Christian. A bit tough, so we've got to be drinking water. On Tuesday it was rough because we didn't have our sport uniforms. By 6am it was already 23.5 degrees in Perth and the temperature climbed quickly. The city soaring to 42.6 degrees at 11.04. The saviour, the sea breeze, just minutes later at 11.30. But the heat was irrepressible. By 2pm the city was back around 40 degrees and it stayed there all afternoon. The Frio Dockers wondering if they really play a winter sport in the heat of the battle at pre-season training. Families finding creative ways to keep cool. Mate, I come down, I was sweating. I went through the water, I stood in the shade, I was shivering. Residents of Perth Zoo following suit, rhinos and otters taking a dip. At the airport, a baptism of fire for arrivals from London. <laughs> straight to the beach. You're going straight to the beach this afternoon? Hit the beach. For those in the sun, a message. Mark Regan was hospitalised with heat stroke last week. I was just having a good time and with my son and not really thinking about that and it wasn't then until a few hours later that those symptoms kicked in. Emergency services on standby for those in trouble. The vulnerable people are the very young and the very old um, and so really check in on those old people that, you're, that are members of your family or, or that you know well or neighbours just to make sure that they're they've got an air-conditioned house and, and, and they're staying cool. It's not just humans that our medical professionals are concerned for. Vets like the ones here at Swan Valley say that our furry friends like Chester feel the heat just as much as us and there's signs you can look out for if they're struggling. Agitated, um, seeking out shade, um, they may start to drool, um, uh, vomiting and diarrhoea as well. Try and bring your pet in and cool them off. No cool cats wherever you were in Perth today. Lockie Burns, 7 News. Samantha Jolly joins us now with an early look at the hot weather. And Sam, everyone is wanting to know, will tomorrow be any cooler? Well, so it was meant to be quite a bit cooler, but that forecast has changed this afternoon and tomorrow is now looking hotter. We have a top of 39 degrees expected in the city tomorrow, 43 in Ellenbrook and Midland. Still, that is a few degrees cooler than today's blistering maximum. As we just heard, the top in the city, 42.6 degrees. But our hottest area was actually Bullsbrook in the northeast. 45.2 degrees. The west coast trough that's causing the heat will start to finally move inland tomorrow and a weak cold front will brush the coast so we will start to see the extreme conditions move away from the metro area. Right now it is still 36 degrees. We'll finally get some relief from this heat over the weekend and I'll have that forecast a little bit later we can see. Thanks, Sam. The livestock ship no one knows what to do with came into Fremantle port today, but it was a short visit. Only to restock feed because the Federal Department of Agriculture still hasn't decided where the animals will end up. Leaving Fremantle port this afternoon, 
but going nowhere. In scorching heat, this is day four for 15,000 livestock in Limbo off WA's coast. Today, the vessel restocked feed, but the sojourn was short-lived. Tonight, re-anchored and sitting idle once again. My understanding is that the export and the Commonwealth are walk, working through those stocking levels. Um, they had to wait for an independent vet to get out there to assess the animals. This will be 60 days on board a ship by the end of the journey, and an estimated 30 to 33 days ahead of these sheep. A plan is now being considered to offload some of the sheep to free up space on the ship that will restart its journey to the Middle East via a longer and safer route. Escalating conflict in the Red Sea forced it to turn back 12 days ago. The federal government now deciding its future. It says these are complex assessments that must balance Australian biosecurity, export legislation, animal welfare and the requirements of our trading partners. But the Farming Federation says it's playing politics. It's either a, you know, a directive from Murray Watt or it's a uh, incompetence on the behalf of the Department of Agriculture. Someone needs to make a decision which one it is. Heads should roll. The animals on board the ship have now been at sea for almost 30 days and sweltered through 40 degree temperatures. But the federal government maintains they are OK. Two vets who have boarded the vessel report the animals to be in good health. Weeks at sea and yet no closer to a destination. Nick Overall, 7 News. Premier Roger Cook is among political leaders who've urged the Reserve Bank to start cutting interest rates. Mortgage holders could be saving hundreds of dollars a month after good news on inflation. Celebrating Medicare's 40th birthday. As celebrations over yesterday's inflation nosedive turned to questions about when interest rates should fall too. The Reserve Bank of Australia are an independent body and the government doesn't direct them. Though he'd earlier revealed his preference... I, of course, would like to see uh, cuts to uh, interest rates. Economists are now predicting two and possibly three rate cuts this year. On a $600,000 mortgage, two 25 basis point cuts would save $200 a month. The Queensland Premier sticking his neck out, demanding the Reserve Bank cut soon and the retail banks do it now. There is no rule that says the banks can't cut rates in advance of the RBA. The 1.3% fall in inflation to 4.1 spurred the stock market to a record high, falling back today, but still good news for self-funded retirees. My super depends on that, so it's very good. Our share port portfolio has been going down like everyone else's, so very pleased. But the effects of 13 interest rate rises are still being felt, particularly in retail, with consumer confidence at a record low. Even cut price retailers like Soconomy, selling refurbished furniture, clothes and household goods, are noticing the change in consumer behaviour. They're really trying to ensure that the dollar is going further and they're spending a lot more time shopping around. The retailers wish from next week's Reserve Bank meeting... To ..return some love during that Valentine's period and actually cut interest rates. Wanting the cash registers to start singing again. And with the reworked Stage 3 tax cuts going before Parliament next week, I can reveal that the Coalition is planning not to vote against them, not wanting to stand in the way of cost of living relief for middle Australia and effectively dealing the Greens out, ensuring they can't leverage their casting votes to force even more changes. Now, shadow ministers tell me they're promising to launch a full frontal attack on Anthony Albanese over his broken promise, and I'm told the Coalition will announce its formal position after its party room meetings early next week. Rick. Thanks, Mark. A sophisticated grow house has been uncovered in a Geraldton shed. It's allegedly owned by a 50-year-old with links to a bikey gang. 36 cannabis plants were inside when the dog squad alerted officers to them last week. Meth, ammunition and cash were also found in targeted raids on more Midwest properties by the gang crime squad. Two members of the Coffin Cheaters were charged with drug and firearm offences after a search of their Geraldton clubhouse. Charges against the man accused of sparking the devastating Wooroloo fires have been dropped. Daniel Preyus was due to face trial next week, but prosecutors have dropped the charges. The court was told police were no longer confident they could prove the fires were started by the angle grinder being used by Mr Preyus. 86 homes were destroyed in the bushfire. 
There's a warning tonight to check lithium-ion batteries after two separate fires across Perth in as many days. An electric bike is to blame for causing extensive damage to a home in Applecross. Fierce flames wake this Applecross street. What you're hearing is the sound of an e-bike battery exploding. Three massive great bangs. Uh, saw all the flashing and saw a big glow, actually. Seven crews raced to the home on 4th Avenue just after midnight. Six people inside managed to get out safely. A bit scary for those people. They really had no idea what was happening. It took firefighters half an hour to extinguish the blaze. This battery responsible for destroying a home in minutes. It's the second fire caused by lithium-ion batteries in as many days after two e-bikes caught a light on a balcony in Highgate. Fires caused by lithium batteries have doubled in WA over the last six years. Fire investigators warn faulty or imitation batteries are to blame. Experts say this is what you should look out for. The age of the battery, have they been subjected to heat? Have they been subjected to, you know, puncture? Have they been dropped? Have they been overcharged? Um, are they a genuine battery? Are they uh, being used by genuine chargers? Last year, 60 structure fires across Perth were caused by lithium batteries. We just ask everyone just to do their diligence in ensuring that they are charging correctly and charging um, with genuine chargers. So an easy ride doesn't cause a fire disaster. Rachel Tassica, 7 News. It's been revealed former staff at Bunbury Regional Prison have been paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in compensation for bullying, intimidation and sexual harassment. Let's go live to Parliament and Jeff Parry. And Jeff, the offenders were fellow prison officers. That's uh, right, Sue, and some of them quite senior in the prison system. Seven News uncovered this scandal and we've been reporting on it since 2022. Female prison officers subjected to threats of rape and death, sexual intimidation, bullying, even headless animal carcasses left on their doorsteps. But if you stand up for yourself, you're targeted. This it just made us feel completely powerless, like we had nowhere to go because no one cared. The government has so far paid out $770,000 to eight former prison officers. We understand there are more claims in the works and those people have been gagged by non-disclosure agreements. Rick? Thanks, Jeff. New data has shown Perth property prices have continued to outstrip the nation in growth. They jumped 1.6% in January. It takes the increase in value over the past year to 16.7%. The median value is now more than $676,000. It's seen a strong increase in investor interest as well. I think that it's largely driving uh, much of the growth that we're seeing from a national perspective as well. CoreLogic data also shows rental increases in Perth are the highest in the nation. Houses jumped 3.5% in the past three months. The New South Wales Ambulance Service has been forced to apologise to shark attack victim Lauren O'Neill for leaking a photo of her injury. An investigation was launched by police and St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney after gruesome photos of the swimmer's leg began circulating on social media. The Ambulance Service has admitted one of its officers was responsible and is now under investigation. New pictures have emerged of Australia's Taipan helicopters that will soon be scrapped, despite Ukraine begging to take them. The fleet, which is worth almost a billion dollars, will head to an army landfill. Hidden from public view inside a RAF base hangar in Townsville, the decommissioned, mothballed Taipan helicopters that Ukraine has been begging for. We can save lives. We can get them over there. The fleet of 45 Taipans was grounded last September, defence citing multiple safety incidents. Worth 20 million apiece, they're now being disassembled for eventual burial, despite pleas for a rethink. Let's make it a win-win situation for everybody, for the government and for Ukraine. The federal government says Ukraine's request came too late. They'd already started to strip them. It will require considerable taxpayers' money and time to get those aircraft back into uh, flying conditions. Seven News has also spoken to the aircraft maintenance engineer who was team leader for the Taipan fleet for the last 10 years. He says he'd even be prepared to volunteer his time to get the helicopters operational again for Ukraine. 
I would be prepared to donate my time however long is required, he said, adding, I do not believe the MRH-90 is unsafe. Ukraine flies Russian helicopters, some decades old, older than most pilots. Defence confirming today significant parts have already been sold off. It's a missed opportunity uh, that we have in terms of support from Australia to Ukraine, but I think we have to move forward. But the Ukraine Federation saying if the government can change its position on stage three tax cuts, it can on Taipans too. Chris Reason, 7 News. Football Australia is investigating a possible data breach involving players' passports and contracts as well as ticket buyers' personal details. In what's been dubbed a cyber own goal, the organisation leaked secret online keys that allow public access to private data. Researchers believe every customer or fan of Australian soccer could be affected. We're just a few minutes away from the biggest Powerball jackpot in history, a staggering $200 million. Tickets have been selling fast at outlets across Perth this afternoon. It's estimated half of the adults in Australia have an entry in tonight's draw. And if you've ever imagined what it feels like to strike it big, you're about to hear the moment some lucky winners get the life-changing news. If you haven't been fantasising about winning $200 million all week, for a moment, just imagine. You have won that $100,000. So congratulations. How does it feel? Are you serious? I'm just getting all emotional. You were our Division One winner and won $1 million. Oh, you're joking. You have been joking. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. $1 million. $1 million? Small change for some. You have won ten million dollars. Oh my god! I'm in shock. I don't know what to say. I'm in shock. My heart is beating. Do you think you'd go back to work after smoking? No, nah, I'm walking out right now. And some serious money. Fifty-three million three hundred and thirty-three thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars and thirty-four cents, mate. Congratulations. <laughs> My uh, grandson wanted a dog for Christmas and um, I was trying to work out how I was going to afford it. Um, he can have as many dogs as he likes now. The odds against winning the jackpot are more than 1 in 134 million. You have more chance of being struck by lightning, 1 in 12,000. Being killed by a bee, 1 in 54,000. Or being wiped out by an asteroid, one in 1.6 million. People don't realise when you look at that as a number, it's essentially zero. Might see you tomorrow. Tom Saker, 7 News. <laughs> and we'll have the full draw soon in 7 News. Next, a controversial Princess Diana interview is in the spotlight again. Secrets revealed as thousands of documents are released. How the journalist accused of wrongdoing has defended his part in the scandal. Also, who's replacing retiring WA Senator Pat Dodson? Charged with manslaughter, the plea entered by a Hollywood star. Secrets revealed how the US plans to strike back for those drone attacks. And later, who stepped in to save a toddler trapped in a shopping centre claw machine? WA will have a new senator in Canberra next week. A joint sitting of both houses of state parliament today confirmed 38-year-old Varun Ghosh will replace former Senator Patrick Dodson, who resigned on medical grounds. The thing that got me into politics and, got, and one of the main reasons I joined the Labor Party was my interest in education and making sure that um, access to education was available to all Australians and that we have a very high quality education system in Australia. Mr Ghosh is a Cambridge University graduate and admitted to the bar in Perth and New York. There are new headaches for the BBC tonight over the decades-old Princess Diana interview. Secret documents have been released, including emails where the reporter who tricked the late royal into speaking blamed jealousy and racism for any controversy linked to the broadcast. Considered one of the scoops of the century. Well, there were three of us in this marriage. So it was a bit crowded. 
In 2020, it was found the BBC deceived Princess Diana into giving the interview, tricked by fake bank statements. The journalist, though, Martin Bashir, continues to deny wrongdoing. In emails released under Freedom of Information, he blamed professional jealousy for the scandal. There was some irritation that a second-generation immigrant of non-white, working-class roots should have the temerity to enter a royal palace and conduct an interview. It proves that at a certain point in time, the BBC admits that it was in possession of certain documents, but also decided not to release those documents. The corporation accusing the reporter of destroying or removing evidence when he joined a rival network. Despite the mistakes made 30 years ago, the BBC denies it's acted in bad faith or covered up matters in recent years. Martin Bashir quit the broadcaster in 2021. An interview that made and broke a career. In London, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. There are more details on America's response to the drone attack that killed three soldiers in Jordan. President Joe Biden is reported to be close to finalising the retaliatory strikes that will likely last weeks. The campaign is expected to include Iranian targets outside Iran and would include multiple targets in several countries and locations, including cyber operations. Actor Alec Baldwin has pleaded not guilty to a charge of involuntary manslaughter. It's over the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of his movie Rust. Hutchins died in October 2021 when a gun Baldwin was holding discharged during a scene rehearsal. Baldwin's legal team has demanded a speedy trial for the 65-year-old actor. A gas explosion has lit up the night sky in the U.S., state of, jo of Oklahoma. Flames leapt more than 150 metres into the air when the gas pipeline ruptured and caught fire. Emergency crews shut down the supply but had to keep a safe distance away while the gas was burned off. A Perth restaurant owner admits to running a squalid kitchen. Dragged to court for a second time for health violations. The restaurant charges that are enough to make you feel sick. Perth to host thousands of athletes, but it's not the Commonwealth Games, the sporting event coming to our city. Also ahead, the prediction for new and used cars, what's happening with wait times and prices. Concussion crackdown, the changes set to impact juniors all the way to the top level. And later, toy trouble, how rescuers got this trapped toddler out. The owner of a restaurant in Perth's East has admitted to a series of sickening food standard breaches. The photographs taken by health inspectors in this report are confronting. As Lucy Murray reports, it's not the owner's first conviction. It's nausea-inducing, dead rats, cockroaches and oil dripping down the wall. This is one of WA's worst food safety breaches. 18 months later, the owner of Ascot's Aquarium Seafood Chinese restaurant was back in court, facing identical charges. Will you clean I'm your restaurant? To talk to you, all right? Chong Choi Wan pleaded guilty to six charges of failing to meet food standards. The prosecutor telling the court the amount of rodent dropping indicated a significant infestation and a serious cross-contamination risk, raw meats on the benchtop above uncovered noodles, calling it a significant potential impact upon the health of customers. Despite pleading guilty this morning, the restaurant remains open and serving customers. There are at least six people here for lunch today. Greeting customers, Miss Chong with the former Premier. But she didn't want to face the cameras today or in 2022, when she told Seven News she had implemented new cleaning practices. Clearly not clean enough. She'll be sentenced later this month. Lucy Murray, Seven News. The world's social media giants were accused of having blood on their hands today as their owners and bosses were grilled by politicians in Washington. But that was nothing compared with being confronted by the families of those who've been bullied to death. Few have more power than Mark Zuckerberg. Yet today, the Meta boss met his match. 
They're here, you're on national television. Would you like now to apologize to the victims who have been harmed by your project? Confronted by parents with pictures of their dead children, the victims of online bullies or drug sales, social media grief like so distilled. Social media's best known CEO like cajoled into saying victims. sorry. No one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. Too little, too late. Um, and he was made to do it by one of the senators. I don't feel like he has a motion. Some CEOs needed a subpoena to get them to a hearing even the politicians say is like an annual flogging. Safety is one of the core priorities that defines TikTok under my leadership. You have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. For all the tension in today's hearing, Americans might wave it off as political theatre. Politicians have hounded big tech bosses here for years, but passed very few laws to curb them. I'm so tired of this. It's been 28 years, what, since the internet? We haven't passed any of these bills. In the United States, Tim Lester, 7 News. Perth has beaten Auckland to host the 2027 World Police and Fire Games. It's the Olympics of law enforcement, firefighting and prison services. From cross-country to cross-fit, darts to dodgeball. Thousands of competitors from 85 countries will compete in 65 events over 10 days. The Games foster a healthy rivalry between services. Particularly looking forward to competition with police here in Western Australia uh, and just putting a real clear line in the sand here about the the way that uh, we've, we've played football against each other, we've played rugby against each other and now uh, with these games we're going to be able to take them on uh, in a whole range of different sports. The competition is held every two years. Used car prices have dropped more than 10% in the past year and they're tipped to fall even further. Motoring experts say the tide has turned since the pandemic and it's now well and truly a buyer's market. Business has been booming at car yards across the country. 2023 was a phenomenal year for the automotive industry in Australia, particularly used cars. Pandemic-induced backlog for new cars drove demand for second-hand. More than two million were sold over the course of the year. Hitting its pinnacle in November, 204,000 vehicles transacted and sold. Almost 17% of all sales were Toyotas. Mazda was the next most popular make. The crowd favourites were Utes, the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Hilux. The consumer did get a win. We did see a reduction in pricing. Prices are forecast to keep trending down, having already dropped almost 12% in the past nine months. Much like the housing sector, vehicle prices are largely driven by supply and demand. With so many imports coming into the country this year, we're told it will be a buyer's market. The used car and the new car market are interlinked. When the one is in a good state of supply, the other one follows suit. The consumer can expect to see drive away deals, finance offers throughout the course of 2024, and again, which encourages a really strong used car market. Wait times for new cars are expected to ease too, from years long waits for the most popular Toyota models to a few months. And for most other makes. The wait times are going back to, to you know, around 20 to 30 days, uh, the levels we saw before the pandemic. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Still to come tonight, concussion overhaul. The sweeping changes coming to dozens of sporting codes. How long players will spend on the sidelines after suffering a head knock. Cross your fingers, the $200 million draw you'll only see here on 7 News. Also, how much more you'll be paying at the pub for a pint. And coming up in sport, we track down the West Aussie who helped make Mitch Marsh Australia's best cricketer. Plus, a young docker gets compared to a Cats superstar. Now, Fuel Watch. Perth's petrol prices brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News.
Taking a look at finance now, and the share market couldn't add to yesterday's record high. It finished 92 points lower to snap an eight-day winning streak. Investors hit the sell button on bank stocks after the US Federal Reserve warned a rate cut in March is unlikely. Gold is trading at 2,048 US dollars an ounce, a tonne of iron ore, $131. And for holidaymakers heading to Bali, one Australian dollar is currently buying 10,281 rupiah. Australian sport is facing a concussion overhaul with players of all ages said to be sidelined for at least 21 days after a head knock. The AFL is now under pressure to join more than 20 other codes adopting the new recommendations. A new concussion crackdown is on the way to protect all players from junior sport up to the big time. Oh, Lewis! The AIS is leading the charge, demanding at least three weeks on the sidelines for children and adults in community sport after they suffer a head knock. Some of the most tragic circumstances that we have come across are the grassroots players, children and adults, who suffer debilitating concussion-related injuries. The recommendations follow last year's Senate inquiry which linked repeated head trauma to CTE, the neurogenerative brain disorder that contributed to the deaths of Danny Frawley and Shane Tuck. In 2013, the AFL introduced a 20-minute concussion test for players suspected of having a head knock. In 2021, the league enforced a mandatory 12-day break after a concussion. Now the AIS is calling for at least 21 days out. The reality is, is that we've, we've got enough science to show that the brain does take uh, a lot longer than 12 days to recover. One of the things that we could improve on is having adult and uh, junior or children specific guidelines. Around 27 sporting codes have already said they're likely to implement the guidelines, but the AFL says it'll take more time to consider the recommendations before making its call. I think they could easily implement it straight away. It's, it's really a case of changing their guidelines from 12 days to uh, 21. Kate Massey, 7 News. The tax on alcohol is going up again. It's led to concern that a $15 pint of beer could soon become the norm. A litre of alcohol used to make a beverage now costs $101.85. In the most recent cost of living figures, alcohol went up 2.8%. It's the highest jump in any category. Distillers say the tax is rising so quickly it's crippling hundreds of Australian businesses. Now get your tickets ready. The next 90 seconds could change your life forever. It's time for the record-breaking $200 million Powerball draw. Hello friends, Liz Cantor here and welcome to tonight's record-breaking Powerball draw number 1446. As always, here in studio with me are our draw officials and government supervisor. If you won Division 1 in Powerball, you could do almost anything. Good luck. The total Division 1 prize pool, if won, is a history-making $200 million. You heard that right. It's the largest Powerball prize ever seen. To start your dreams, you'll need to match all seven winning numbers plus the Powerball. And the first numbers are 12 and 33. Last week's draw saw 26 Division II winning entries take home over $110,000 each. Just imagine what you could do with that amount of money. Maybe you're about to find out, fingers crossed. Next was 23 and 35. If there is no Division I winner tonight, the Powerball prize pool will jackpot to a new record of $250 million in next week's draw. So make sure you grab your Powerball ticket each week because you do not want to miss out on that. Next down was 126 and here is 32. Now, on to the all-important Powerball. While we wait, let's recap those winning numbers again, and they are 12, 33, 23, 35, 1, 26, 32, and tonight's Powerball is number 10. Well, I really hope they were your winning numbers. You can also check your entry in store, online, or by the app. Good night. Aiming for a big prize has landed a toddler in trouble. It wasn't Lotto, but a stuffed toy that lured the young boy into a claw machine. Police were quickly on the scene. Don't miss the moment they managed to free him soon on 7. First Barra has sport and you've tracked down the man who rebuilt Mitch Marsh, Barra. Yes, Rick, we have. And he also hails from a famous cricketing family. We'll hear from him next as the accolades keep coming for the bison. The cricket world falls in love with Mitch Marsh after one of the all-time great acceptance speeches. 
I'm a bit fat at times and I love a beer, but... Um... <laughs> And we were at a very hot Dockers training today and Nat Fife and Jai Amos were handed huge compliments. New Allen Border medalist Mitch Marsh gave an acceptance speech for the ages last night and a lot of his praise was saved for a former WA batsman who also has a famous cricketing surname. Scott Muleman helped make Marsh a test player, sparking one of cricket's great comebacks. It hasn't quite dawned on Mitch Marsh. The Allen Border medal is his. Yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't quite feel right yet. Australian cricket's highest honour, won by greats like McGrath, War, Ponting and Gilchrist. Marsh delivering one of the all-time acceptance speeches. I'm a bit fat at times and I love a beer, but... Um... <laughs> Equal parts hilarious well, and heartfelt. Bit, uh, I often spoke to my wife about... Um, Dad, I just wanted to get one more crack at it and it's been amazing. Out of the test team for more than three years, Marsh got that crack during the Ashes when Cameron Green was injured. A century straight up, the innings of his life. In the series against Pakistan, he was Australia's leading run scorer. What is that? Plastered. In white ball cricket, he brought batting brutality only the bison is capable of. Two centuries in the glorious World Cup side. In 2020, the national captaincy and more runs bludgeoned. His famous cricketing family proud as punch through all of it. Dad Jeff in Coral Bay last night. I called him, he was in a pool comp so, uh, at the pub, so uh, he had to call me back actually. Um. <laughs> Special thanks reserved for batting coach Scott Muleman. I would have hit for hundreds of hours with him. Um, he's never charged me a cent uh, as a coach um, and he's a giver. The secret to success, technical but also psychological. I think uh, the big thing is, yeah, being relaxed, yeah, has been a big part of his, I guess, the recent times, his success. Marsh signing off last night with a promise. I'll see you on the dance floor. <laughs> Where there might still be some room for improvement. Yeah, I've seen Mitch dance a few times, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, he's probably got a bit to work to do on that. There's only so much a coach can do. Rory Campbell, 7 News. <laughs> Great stuff to footy now. And Docker's young gun, Jai Amos, has been compared to Cats superstar Jeremy Cameron. Brilliant Frio defender Jordan Clark also excited about Nat Fife returning to his best form. The weather meant it was a day for finding some shade and taking your jumper off. Andy Brayshaw was back after stitches over his eye following a nasty knock and he was wearing orange, which is the don't touch me colour. Former cat Jordan Clark saying Frio young gun Jai Amos reminds him of Geelong superstar Jeremy Cameron. I would say he's not too dissimilar, if I'm very honest. I, you know, the way he moves at ground level and can pick up ground balls and kicks goals from anywhere and is very accurate. Um, yeah, I, I think that... Jai's going to be a very um, popular player in the AFL over the next however long he plays for and um, it's exciting that we've got him here at Freo. The star defender also excited about playing alongside rejuvenated superstar Nat Fife. Well, the way he's gone about this pre-season is like, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be around. Like He seems to be back to the five year of old. And Eagles youngster Elijah Hewitt has spoken about that chronic foot issue that's plagued him for several years. So yeah, me and Stephen Allen, one of our physiotherapists, are going to fly over and catch up with the Australian ballet physio called Sue Mays. She's supposed to be an expert in this area, I've dealt with a few AFL players over in Melbourne dealing with similar issues. Uh, I've been deloaded for the last probably month or two and just trying to figure this out and get on top of it so I don't have to play with it for the next 15 years. A half-time coaching masterstroke by Ange Postacoglu has guided Tottenham back inside the Premier League's top four. A brave double change, producing three goals in eight minutes against Brentford. Richarlison, and it's three in a breathtaking seven-minute spell. Second half, um, you know, I think 25 minutes, 30 minutes, we're outstanding. We scored three great goals and probably should have had a couple more. And Liverpool extended its winning streak to four games, while Socceroo Mitch Duke has overcome a hamstring injury in time for Australia's Asian Cup quarter-final against South Korea, which is on Friday night. 
More than 30 years after his first win at Pipeline, 51-year-old Kelly Slater was back for opening day, defying time like no one else. The 11-time world champ, as smooth as ever, surfing on a wild card against Margaret Rivers' Jake Robinson, who's WA's reigning champion there. I was all fired up with, with our heat, like me and Kelly. Yeah, it was a good heat. Had all the butterflies before the heat, and I was trying to let them fly. Both are through to the knockout round of 32, where Slater faces Aussie Ethan Ewing. The spiritual home of surfing taking its toll on 21-year-old rookie Cade Matson in the absolute harshest way. Now, Kelly Slater, Rick and Sue, arguably the greatest surfer of all time. And Jack Robinson, I think you know Rick from Margs, once described as the next Kelly Slater. Is he that good? He's good, all right, and more to come, I'm sure. Thanks, Barra. A three-year-old boy has a story to tell for the rest of his life after being rescued from a claw machine full of toys. The toddler climbed up through the prize chute and wasn't in a hurry to leave. Cooking up mischief, three-year-old Ethan Hopper has always had an appetite for adventure. He was climbing before he was walking and he's always kept us on our toes. Everyone we spoke to says they're not surprised that it's something that he would do because he's so very adventurous. But never in their wildest dreams did they think he'd end up here, trapped inside a Hello Kitty claw machine while his parents paid for groceries. And I looked over at Ethan and he was just standing next to the machine. I looked back to talk to the lady and then I turn back and he's inside. And that's where he stayed for the next hour, playing with the toys. To start throwing toys down to shoot, screaming out free toys. I wanted to freak out, but I thought then he would freak out. Until police arrived. Glass. Perfect. And worked out a plan to get Ethan, hey, Ethan free. Ethan, go to that back corner. Ethan, cover your eyes, hide. Come here, buddy. There you go. While police said Ethan could keep a toy, his parents thought it could encourage him. I don't think he'll ever do it again. A lesson learned about temptation and a tale to tell forever. The next time you see a claw machine, what do you think you'll do? I'm not doing that and truth. Katrina Blowers, 7 News. Sam Jolly's got your weather next. Sam, we've been feeling hot, hot, hot. Walking on sunshine, Rick. I love Rick. it. <laughs> but tomorrow is the last day of our heat wave. Thankfully, it is looking a bit hotter than we originally thought, but we will get weekend relief. I'll have the forecast next. Seven News. Free. Simple. Foolproof. The way for you to verify who that person is. A surefire way to be the new generation of scammers using technology to rip you off. I felt absolutely sick. What families should do right now on 7 News at 6. We thought yesterday was hot, but it was hotter today. In fact, Perth's warmest day in four years. And here it is, 42.6 degrees, the official reading for the city. And that followed on from a hot night, a low of almost 22. We did get an afternoon sea breeze. The temperature dropped a bit, but it is still around 35 degrees right now. Further inland, we had some record-breaking temperatures. The Swan Valley recorded its hottest day ever, 45.1 degrees. Bullsbrook got to 45.2. It was 45 at the airport, a lot cooler for Fremantle, 38, and then we had 39 further south. The west coast trough that is causing the heat will start to move inland tomorrow, so we will see those extreme conditions move away from the metro area. Taking a look at the national forecast, 33 and sunny for Brisbane tomorrow, 28 in Sydney, it's looking mostly sunny in Canberra and cloud clearing in Adelaide, 29. So still hot across the state tomorrow, 45 for Marble Bar, 42 in Kalgoorlie, even Bunbury and Bustleton will get to 35 and then 37 in Esperance. We're getting down to 22 again tonight. Then for the last day of our heat wave, 39 in the city tomorrow, 43 for Ellenbrook and Midland. Saturday will be windy but a lot cooler, 31. Mild on Sunday, a cloudy start and 26 degrees. Sunny and 27 on Monday, 31 Tuesday, but then it's hot again, 35 on Wednesday and 38 for next Thursday. And congratulations to John and Elaine Moltoni from Applecross celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. They have three children, 11 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Also celebrating their diamond anniversary, Mavis and Michael Sissons of Wanneroo. They have two daughters and six grandchildren. And Elaine and John Archer from Marbella were also married on this day, 60 years ago. They have three daughters, 10 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Congratulations to all our couples.
Now to Mark Lacroix with your boating and fishing details. Well, thanks, Sam. With the hot weather around, it's been the perfect time to hit the water. Let's check it out. Expect southerly winds, 15 to 25 knots, seas 1 to 2 metres and a southwesterly swell, 1 to 1.5 metres. The low tide in Mandra is around 7am, the high is at 4.41pm, times roughly an hour earlier up around Hillary's. If you're taking the board out, there won't be anything big around, but the water will be beautiful early, with the fun little reef breaks like grabbers and metems throwing up a few waves. If you're wetting a line, there's some important information to keep in mind this week. With the West Coast demersal season closing from today, it'll be back open for the start of the Easter school holidays. Also, this Saturday's abalone fishing day has been cancelled due to the bad weather forecast, and it's your last chance to get out and enjoy marin season with that season closing at noon this Monday. And check out tonight's viewer picks. The Farnell boys, Ben and Blake, had a great time reeling in some nice Swan River tailor. Ian West caught this whopping 78 centimetre dart off the beach at Dongra and have a look at this massive King George Whiting Mark Sedintus snagged off Bustledon. Keep sending your awesome catches to fishing at 7.com.au to be featured. I'll catch you tomorrow night to have a look at the weekend. Thanks, Mark. Now, Rachel Tasker is at Lottery West headquarters tonight where computers have been processing millions of tickets. Rachel, has there been a winner? Rick, I can tell you there are two winners, but unfortunately none from WA. They're from New South Wales and Queensland. The prize, $200 million, the biggest in Australian history. And for those winners, it will no doubt change their lives forever. Rick Sue. Thanks, Rachel. Well, back to work for all of us tomorrow. That's 7 News this Thursday, the 1st of February. We'll be back with updates throughout the evening. For the latest stories, head to 7news.com.au. Stay cool and enjoy the rest of your night here on 7.